I'm Adam Smith, and here at the University of Sheffield, I currently have many hats, but one of those hats sees me working on a cultural engagement project, which is anthologising poems of protest, written by Sheffield residents at the dawn of the 19th century and printed in Sheffield's radical press. And it's in working with this radical press that I've come across and become very acquaint well acquainted with a man called James Montgomery, the man that I'd like to tell you more about. Um, James Montgomery was a prominent figure in 19th century Sheffield. He was a poet, a hymn writer, a statesman, a journalist, editor of these newspapers that I've been looking at, particularly, well, the Sheffield Iris newspaper. He was also a slavery abolitionist and a bona fide Sheffield legend. But I'd be pleasantly surprised if you'd heard of James Montgomery today. So it's even more striking to consider then that at the dawn of the 19th century, he was causing really big waves in the worlds of poetry and politics. In fact, in 1806, Bob Southey, the then poet laureate, actually said of Montgomery um, that his poem, The Wanderer, was worth a thousand of William Wordsworth's lyrical ballads. Here in Sheffield, he was an even bigger deal. Not only does there remain a life-size bronze statue of James Montgomery outside of the cathedral, there's also Montgomery Roads, there's a Montgomery Theatre, there was one time a Montgomery Tavern. To find a building with Montgomery's name on it in Sheffield, you really do just have to throw a stick. Um, he was, like I say, a bona fide Sheffield legend. But his career was actually far more fraught and dogged by controversy than this description um, might make him seem. For instance... When he was editor of the Sheffield Iris newspaper, he was actually imprisoned twice on dubious and suspicious charges of treason. I was looking at a letter in Sheffield Archives the other day um, in which he wrote to a friend from prison to suggest that he didn't think that he was the, 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 the poem that he was charged for had anything to do with the fact that he was imprisoned. He thought that the local authorities, that local government were after him for his associations with known radicals, for controversial figures and for the kinds of things that he was reporting in his newspaper, which he claimed was just news, just things that were happening in Sheffield and the authorities didn't like it. Um, after he'd been in jail twice uh, because of these charges of sedition and treason, he actually withdrew from the public stage for 10 years. But when he returned, he became not, he came back not as a political commentator, but as uh, the nation's most prolific hymn writer. And in this role, he was universally uh, accepted by the establishment. And in his final years, he was able to combine his journalistic instincts and his poetic skill to publicly champion the causes that had defined his career, racial equality, workers' rights, religious toleration, access to education, issues that are still important today. Using newly examined archive material, I'm asking for an opportunity to tell the incredible story of how one of Sheffield's most controversial radicals became one of its best-loved heroes and how the very same local government that once imprisoned him on these dubious charges of sedition came to organise and orchestrate a tremendous, bombastic, citywide funeral. <laughs> 